Welcome to the AYP News Show, where Mark Silbert dives into the latest photography news. Let's take up the first, what's our first point here, Jaron? All right, our first story is a little bit of community news. So uh, there's a showcase going on in the UK, which is called We Are Here. Uh, yeah. It's an uh, exhibit of work from new and established black female photographers, and they've got some great work on show here. Let's hold on that image right there. So tomorrow we're going to be doing our um, critiquing, and boy, if I were critiquing this photograph, it's spot on. She's, uh, you know, the emotion that's coming through. So she's speaking very passionately. People are listening. She's framed incredibly well. I mean, look at that framing. It's, you've got the speaker on the right side, and you've got... You know, the hands, it's it's a brilliant photograph all around. Okay, what is the next thing? The abandoned sites around Alberta. I remember we went over this yesterday. This is kind yeah, of Yeah, so there's a new book that's come out. Uh, and it actually, I found out that this was inspired by a Facebook page. He's created a book now. It's got about 140 images, and it's about abandoned buildings in Alberta. It's when we really were talking this over yesterday, I thought, you know, for, for all of us in the COVID time this might be an interesting project to go look around your own area and see you know if there is a, one of these abandoned projects you make sure you don't just trespass though but you you guys figured yes. that out um but but you know that's pretty interesting to see what happened to some of these places like this isn't a, a school room right you can see the desk you can see the blackboard. Remember blackboards? A, a cool project, you guys might want to look around in your area and see what you can find in the way of, uh, they don't have to be that bad, <laughs> but <laughs> find, a new, you know, find an abandoned building and see if you can get some photographs of it. But once again, as Mark said, uh, do be safe and be legal. <laughs> yeah, be safe uh, and legal. Good. We encourage you to do both of those things. Good call. Okay, this is an interesting story. Uh, sign of the times. Nikon yeah, is making robotic. I definitely want to hear what cameras. you guys think about this. Yeah, I really want to know what you think because I'm not I'm not jazzed about this because well tell them what it is, first of all. Yeah, so Nikon and the Red Sox have now teamed up uh, to quote unquote beat COVID nineteen with a robotic camera system, as you say here. So yeah. essentially what they've done is they've installed cameras all throughout the stadium which will allow photographers, and these aren't just stationary cameras, they will move yeah. in a full 360 direction, they'll you know, do whatever. And uh, they're using, looks like uh, Nikon D5 DSLRs. Yeah. Um, and so it'll do video, it'll even generate GIFs apparently. Um, still images, obviously. And so the idea is photographers can use this and there'll be social distancing. So, yeah, Unf I, to me, the, the sad part about it is we miss that whole connection, the human connection that, you know, the, the sports photographers that we've interviewed, like uh, Michael Zagaris and Deanne Fitzmaurice, they talk about how important that is to have that connection and to be out on the field and, you know, be, be somewhat close, but also just you're connected and you're also capturing that exact moment. I mean, I don't know how exactly a robotic camera works. If there's a lag, it would seem like there would be. Even a, even a split second lag can make the difference between the perfect shot and a not so great shot. I and can't also wait here's, till we're here's away the thing from this. too. So much of when you take a photo, you're also looking at what's not in the frame. That's right. And and you especially with sports, I feel like um and you know, Brett, uh if you're watching this now or maybe later, you'll comment yeah. uh being a community member that does a lot of photography. I would wonder how much does he rely on looking at what's at the whole picture absolutely and not just what's in his frame because with these i imagine you can't see anything that's not in your frame well you'd have to robotically move it around and again the, the more mechanical contrivances you have in your way the the more chance there is of, of having things slow down or you know it's just one more skill set that we've got to learn instead of like the instantaneous motion that you would make as a photographer 
And you're right, Jared, like you, you keep your field of vision open. You know, you're looking through the viewfinder or the, you know, whatever. But yeah. also you have two eyes so you can keep the other eye open and scan because that's part of photography is not just being narrowed down. And if you're especially if you're trying to capture the moment, you don't know where that moment could be. All and right. Uh, what's, just, to, what's just to end it off quick. Yeah. Jared also from Chicagoland points out that eventually, you know, some industrious person's going to make this work with AI. And so then there's not even going to be a human photographer. Oh, yeah, sure. Perfect. AI will know. You so, know, I know. That's, uh, that's just. Yeah. We don't want to go in that direction. So just another is, thing to kind of. Uh, yeah. Photography is an art form and, and you can't give artificial intelligence total reign over the art form. OK, yeah. let it help you out with this and that. I'm I'm fine with that. But when it comes to the composition part, that's up to us humans. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, well speaking of AI, that actually leads us yeah, directly leads to us. our next story. That's right. So Adobe is currently, so Adobe has had, I, I think it's probably over by now, but their Adobe Max yeah. um, conference, and they've introduced that there's going to be a new sky replacement tool in Photoshop. And I know you were really interested in this story uh, yeah. because other softwares have, uh, it was like, what was the software? Luminar, Luminar has it, and there's a few others that you can do yeah. this manually. I mean, you can do it in Lightroom. What do you guys think about this? I'm an old school guy, and oh, I course. don't but manipulate. But it is probably one of the most widely used. So. Yeah, I you know I tend to draw the line at uh, adding uh, to an image. You know, I I don't have any problem editing it, but maybe I'm just old school and you know need to get with the times. There are times. Listen, I have taken. Like this photograph, you know, I've taken photographs like her and it would be great to add clouds because clouds add dimension and it changes the whole feeling of the photograph. I probably I'm going to confess I'm going to try this out and see if I like it or not. But I'd be curious what you guys think. Am I just an old fuddy duddy who doesn't want to, you know, come into the modern world of AI or you know, do we have, do we have an, I've been asked this question, do we have an ethical responsibility to be true to what's out there? I don't know about that. Got a little bit of friend news, friend of the show news, Chris Burkhardt, which I'm Chris sure Burkhardt. most of you are familiar with. He has a new film uh, yeah. that's out. Uh, it's not photography related. It's more in his surfing uh, yeah. related, but it's about Eli, uh, Eli Thor. I think yep. that's how you say that. That's right. Uh, he was a kayaker, and uh, he paddled his kayak off a waterfall yeah. in Iceland. And so he ended up taking up surfing instead, largely in part for his daughter, who the film is named after. He almost died in that, by the way, when he paddled yes. off that. It was a, a pretty close call for him. And then he he thought, well, I better, I better tone it down a little bit. I've got a daughter here, you know, and... So he went in for Icelandic surfing, which <laughs> is still pretty challenging. Yeah, I can't imagine that being that much. <laughs> still pretty much of a challenge, but less of a challenge than, than paddling off a waterfall. That's our friend Chris Burkhardt. Please support him and please get his PDF and put it to good use. Next story is a in a memory oh, yeah. of uh, a legendary... Balkan uh, Serbian photographer. Uh, he passed away uh, September 24th, so uh, a little less than a week ago. And this was a man who spent a lot of time photographing some really important moments in, uh, you know, that area's history. And look at you guys. Look at these images from the viewpoint. Go back to that first one with the eclipse. Just notice as we go through these how much you are drawn into the image. Like my first thought is, what are these guys doing? You know, and then it took me a minute to figure it out. They're looking at an eclipse. But notice how you're just drawn into it and you're left asking questions, which is something that a great photograph does. And Bob Holmes talks about that. You know, you want to be, you don't want to give away everything. Like if there was a caption on there that said, I mean, it's, it does say that in the caption, but... 
What if it was like so obvious that they're looking at a solar eclipse that you had no question about it? I love this one. This one's That's, so good. Yeah. You know, and the snow, you know, I that isn't even really a, a perfect, technically perfect photograph, but it doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's showing and it's also leaving me asking a question like, why is this guy so lit up? You know, it's interesting. Some light source is reflected or coming from somewhere. And that, that's and then everything else is so dark in comparison. Yeah, and there's snow falling. Amazing photos. I would encourage people. Um, yeah, check out, out this photographer. Uh, we were sad that, uh, of his passing, but boy, did he leave a, you know, a, a series of pretty dramatic photographs. And here he is translating it into sports. So, so he, yeah, he was able to transition or whatever. I don't know his full story, but he, he used that same ability to get into the thick of it in his sports photography, which is another great lesson. So we got something to leave you with a little bit of a happy high note, which we need in these, these trying times. Yes. So a wife invites Internet to show husband what he missed while sleeping. So uh, the wife took a photo and sent it to uh, this Facebook group. So, um, so this is the photo. And she sent it to a professional photographer group and was just like, hey, can you just Photoshop something in the window that shows what he's missing while he's sleeping? I hope she, um, I hope this is in the UK and he's not driving while he's sleeping because <laughs> it looks I, I like he's on the so, left side. I guess. Yeah, for, for us Americans. And so here's okay. a couple of examples. Just <laughs> Tiger King. Having some fun, putting in some really crazy. This is what stuff. he missed. Pigs flying. Pigs flying. Eiffel oh, Tower. Driving by Long the Eiffel Tower. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, that is our news. Um, the point of this news isn't just to, you know, tell you guys what's happening, but hopefully to bring about some inspiration, things that you can try. It's always good to look around at other photographers, not so much this guy, but, <laughs> you know, the previous photographers. And... You know, get you thinking about alternatives to some of the things that, uh, you know, maybe, you know, like I, artificial intelligence and whatnot. I want to make sure you have subscribed if you haven't done so already. And obviously like and share the video, be involved with it. And remember, let's say this together, folks. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. See you soon. Stay well. Stay safe. Stay creative.